Welcome to NPTEL online course on machine learning and deep learning, fundamentals and applications. In my last class, I explained the concept of the deep learning and also I explained the concept of the convolutional neural network that is CNN. For the training of the network, I can employ the back propagation training algorithm that already I have explained. And if I increase the number of layers of a particular network, it is expected that the performance of the network may improve because the network can extract more number of features from the input image. That means I will be getting more representations of the input data or the input image with the help of more number of layers. So I am repeating this. So if I increase the number of layers of a particular convolutional neural network or the deep architecture, it is expected that the performance may improve. But practically it is not happening in many cases because of the problem of the vanishing gradient. The opposite of the vanishing gradient is the exploding gradient. So today I am going to discuss this concept, the concept of the vanishing gradient. So before explaining this concept, I will be explaining the concept of the single layer perceptron and after this I will be explaining the concept of the multi layer perceptron and also the back propagation training algorithm. And after this I will be explaining the concept of the vanishing gradient problem. So let me begin this class. So in this case, I have shown one single layer perceptron SLP. So we have the input signals x1, x2 up to xm, you can see in the figure. So I have the input signals and you can see I have shown the summing junction and you can see the connecting weights. So WK1, WK2, WKM. These are the weights, the connecting weights between the input node and the summing junction. And also we are considering the bias input. BK is the bias input and you can see these are the input signals. So this is the single layer perceptron. So we do not have any hidden layers. We have the input layer and you can see the output that is the output node and we are considering the activation function. So, at the kth node, the input x, j, this all the inputs are multiplied by their weights, the corresponding weights along with the bias b, k are sum. So, already this concept I have explained. So, I have to consider weighted inputs. So, input is multiplied with the corresponding weights and we have to sum up and also we have to sum the bias. So, we have to consider bias also. At kth node, the inputs x, z multiplied by their weights, the weights are w, k, z along with the bias b, k are sum. And we are considering the activation function phi that controls the magnitude of the accumulated output. So, why I need the activation function that already I have explained in my artificial neural network class. So, this activation function phi controls the magnitude of the accumulated output. So, mathematically how to determine y k. So, y k is the output. So, that is nothing but phi v k. So, v k is nothing but the accumulated output. So, that is nothing but uh, first what we are considering the inputs are multiplied with the corresponding weights plus bias the bias is the b k. So, it is sum up. So, j is equal to 1 to m because we are considering m number of input signals x1, x2 up to xm. So, this is the mathematical representation and in the vector form I can write in this form that is nothing but w transpose x that is the dot product plus b k and b k is the bias input. So, this is the concept of the single layer perceptron. So, in this case we are considering this activation function phi is the activation function and v k is the accumulated input. So, the output of this is 1 if you if you see the output output is 1 when the v k is greater than 0 that is the w transpose k plus b k is greater than 0 that is nothing but 1 the output will be 1 otherwise the output will be 0. So, for this we are considering the step function step function as an activation function. So, here I have shown the step function as an activation function and the bias is considered to change the position of the decision boundary. 
but I cannot change the orientation of the decision boundary. Only I can change the position of the decision boundary based on the bias value. So, bias changes the position of the decision boundary. So, this is the concept of the SLP, the single layer perceptron. Now, uh, during the training what will happen? You can see because already I told you SLP is good only for the simple classification problems and if the problem is very simple and suppose the problem is the linearly separable classes, then we can employ the single layer perceptron. So, here you can see uh, I am considering the inputs x1 d1. So, corresponding to x1 input the desired output is d1 and corresponding to xn the desired output is dn. So, because we, this is the supervised training. So, corresponding to particular input what is the desired output that I know. So, corresponding to x1 the output is d1 that is the desired output corresponding to x2 the desired output is d2 like this I have the training samples. So, during the training first I have to randomly initialize the weights and after this we have to compute y that y I can compute that is the output we can compute. So, that is nothing but w transpose dot x j. So, we are having this equation the input is multiplied with the weights and we are considering the activation function the activation function is phi. After this we have to update the weights the weight w i t plus 1 that is the weight in the t plus 1 iteration is equal to w i t that is the weight in the t eighth iteration plus we are considering the error the error is nothing but the desired output minus actual output that is considered that is the error because already I told you during the back propagation training the error is back propagated to the input. So, this dj minus yj that is nothing but the difference between the desired output and the actual output that we are considering and we have to minimize the error. So, for this I am updating the weights by considering this weight updation rule. So, this is the weight updation rule we are considering. So, I have to do the iterations until the cost function and the cost function already I have defined that is nothing but the difference between the desired output and the actual output. So, until a particular convergence condition is not obtained. So, you can see the error should be less than the parameter, the parameter is gamma. So, gamma is the user defined parameter that is the threshold and if the, the cost function is less than this gamma then I can stop the iteration. So, by considering this back propagation training we can find the decision boundary between the classes, but the problem is it can be employed if the problem is very simple. The problem means the pattern classification problem and the classes should be linearly separable. Then only I can apply the single layer perceptron algorithm. So, for complex tasks I have to consider multi layer perceptron MLP that is the fit forward network with hidden layers. In SLP, I do not have hidden layers, only input layer and the output layers are available, but in case of the MLP, I have to consider hidden layers between input layer and the output layer. So, the drawbacks of the SLP, so the output of a perceptron can take only one of two binary value, so either it is 1 or 0. So, it is not also this SLP not able to solve complex problems, the complex pattern classification problems and picks up many solutions of varying quality. So, that already I have explained in my previous slide. So, it is very difficult to find the best decision boundary between the classes. If the vectors are not linearly separable, learning will never reach a point where all the vectors are correctly classified. So, if the problem is not linearly separable, then this SLP cannot give good accuracy the problem is the misclassification. So, if I consider a very complex problem and if the samples are not linearly separable, then I have to consider MLP, the multi layer perceptron. So, let us move to the next slide. So, in this figure I have shown uh, the concept of the multi layer perceptron MLP. 
So, input is first transform using a learnt nonlinear transformation. So, maybe we can employ some nonlinear transformations uh, for mapping that concept I have explained in case of the radial basis function. So, this allows nonlinearly separable input data to become linearly separable. So, I have to consider nonlinear transformations of the input data and if I do this transformation uh, the data will be linearly separable. So, that concept I have explained in case of the radial basis function and in the figure I have shown one single hidden layer MLP. So, you can see the input layer. So, this is the input layer. So, the nodes are x1, x2, x3 and we are considering one hidden layer and the nodes are h1 and h2 and we have the output node that is y. So, it is a very simple network uh, that is a single hidden layer MLP we are considering. So, what will be the output at the node y? So, we are considering the activation function phi. Now, I need to determine the output of the node y. So, by considering this equation that is nothing but we are considering the activation function phi and weight is multiplied with the input. The input is h j and the corresponding connecting weight is w j. So, I am getting the output y that is nothing but the phi that is the activation function. The w j is multiplied with the input, the input is h j. So, this is my input. So, this expression the phi summation w j into h j that can be represented like this phi w j h j can be represented like this summation w i j into x i because what is the output what is the output in the node h 1 and h 2. So, that is nothing but the input x i is multiplied with the corresponding weights the weights are w i j. So, corresponding to h j that is the output my input is x i. So, x i is multiplied with the corresponding weights that is the connecting weights w i j and we are considering the activation function phi. So, I can represent like this. Now, I have to optimize the loss function j w. So, that is nothing but the minimum and we are considering the difference between the actual output and the desired output. So, d k is the desired output. So, that uh, the loss function we are considering. So, by considering this equation we can determine the actual output and we are considering the desired output that is the d k is the desired output. So, we can consider this loss function. So, the d k is the target to the output node y k. So, d k is the target to the output node y k. So, in this case the k is equal to 1 because we are considering only one node in the output layer. So, we can consider the back propagation training for weight updation. So, move to the next slide. So, what is the back propagation algorithm? So, it has two phases first one is the propagation and another one is the weight update. So, in the propagation forward propagation of a training patterns input through the neural network in order to generate the network outputs value. So, we are getting the output values corresponding to the input patterns the input values and after this the back propagated of the output activations through the neural network using the training pattern target in order to generate the difference between the target and the actual output value. So, that concept already I have explained. So, that is the cost function that is nothing but the difference between the actual output and the target value that is the desired output. So, that we have to minimize for minimization of this I have to adjust the weights of the artificial neural network. So, we have to calculate the gradient loss function. So, gradient value we have to calculate because I have to find the minimum value. So, that is why I am taking the gradient of this and finally, we are considering the weight updation rule. So, that is nothing but W t plus 1 is equal to W t minus gamma and we are considering the gradient of the loss function. So, we are updating the weights and this gamma controls the speed and the quality of the learning. So, that means it controls the learning rate. So, that is the 
parameter the gamma is the user defined parameter and it controls the speed and quality of the learning. So, in this discussion I am considering the sigmoid activation function. So, activation function is sigma x that is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power minus x. So, one advantage of the sigmoid function is that the derivative can be easily computed for the sigmoid function. So, here you can see I am just computing the derivative of the sigmoid function. The sigmoid function is 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power minus x and you can see just I am uh, taking the differentiation and finally I am getting this expression sigma dash x that is the first order derivative is equal to sigma x into 1 minus sigma x. So, you can see it is easy to determine the derivative of the sigmoid function. So, that is why in artificial neural network we consider the sigmoid function. So, during the weight updation uh, already I told you we considered gradient descent algorithm. So, that algorithm already I have explained in one of my classes. So, you can see in y axis we are considering the, the cost function and w is the weight and this point we have to reach that is the global cost minima. So, that point I have to obtain during the iteration that is the global minimum. So, suppose my initial point already I have shown this is my initial weight and if I take the gradient of this then the gradient at this point will be in this direction in this direction that will be the direction of the gradient. But to get the minimum I have to move in the opposite direction of the gradient. So, that is why this uh, this minus sign is because of this. So, I am moving in the negative direction of the gradient. So, that is why we consider the negative sign and this gamma is nothing but the learning rate. So, if the learning rate is very high then during this iteration so this this value may go to this point this value may go to this point like this I have the oscillations and for the convergence it will take time. But if I consider this gamma is small then you can see uh, this convergence the convergence will be like this. So, I am getting this one like this I am getting this gradients and after this I am getting this minimum point that is a global minimum point I am obtaining. If I consider the gamma is very high then the faster will be the convergence but it may not be accurate. But if I consider lower gamma then I will be getting the more accurate convergence during the training but it will take time. So, that is the concept of the gradient descent algorithm. So, I am moving in the opposite direction of the gradient and uh, the parameter gamma controls the learning rate. The parameter gamma controls the learning rate. If gamma is high then the faster is the convergence. If gamma is low then the more accurate in the training, but it will take time for the convergence. Now, I will show the mathematical derivation of the back propagation learning algorithm. So, here I am considering a multi-layer perceptron that is the feed forward network. I have one input layer, one hidden layer and one output layer. So, corresponding to this input layer the inputs are x1, x2, x3, x4 these are the nodes of the input layer and h1, h2, h3 these are the nodes of the hidden layer and I have two nodes in the output layer. The connecting widths between the input layer and the hidden layer that is wij and the connecting nodes between the hidden layer and the output layer is wjk. So, a single hidden layer ANN is considered for simplicity. So, let us consider the derivation of the back propagation training algorithm. So, we can determine yk. So, we are considering the sigma, sigma is the activation function. The weight wjk is multiplied with the input. So, input is h1, h2, h3 for the output y1, y2. So, now we are considering uh, the weight updation for the hidden and the output layer. So, only this portion of the network we are considering. So, inputs will be h1, h2, h3 and the output will be y1 and y2. So, what is the yk? yk is nothing but sigma summation 
I am multiplying the inputs. The input is H1, H2, H3 with the weights, the corresponding weights W, J, K. So, this expression I am obtaining by replacing H, J by this one. So, what is H, J? H, J is nothing but the output corresponding to the input. The inputs are X1, X2, X3, X4. So, in terms of this, I can write H, J. So, H, J is nothing but sigma. If you see this part, sigma. And we are considering the input is multiplied with the connecting weights and it is sum up. That means we are considering the weighted inputs. And the cost function is again that is a j w that is nothing but the desired output and the actual output. So, we are considering y k is the actual output and d k is the desired output that is the target output. And based on this I am formulating the cost function. So, now I have to take the derivative of the cost function with respect to the weight and in this case we have to do for two cases one is for the output nodes and one is for the hidden nodes. So, we have to do the differentiation with respect to the weight and in this case I have to consider the output nodes and the hidden nodes. So, you can see here in the output node uh, I am differentiating the cost function with respect to the connecting weights. So, the connecting weights are W, J, K. So, this is the connecting weights. So, that can be written like this delta J W divided by delta I N K into delta I N K divided by delta W J K. So, what is I N K? That is the input to the output node Y K. So, I N K is the input to the output node Y K. So, this delta divided by delta i n k into 1 by 2 summation k is equal to 1 to k. So, this expression I am getting that is the nothing but the j w that is the cost function and this part I am differentiating the i n k with respect to w j k. So, what is i n k? i n k is nothing but w j k into h j. So, that is the i n k. So, i n k we can determine and that is nothing but w j k into h j. And if I take the differentiation of this one, so this will be this. So, I am just taking the differentiation of this. This is the sigmoid function. And finally, I am getting this expression. The expression is delta k h j. So, what is the delta k? Delta k is nothing but delta i n k minus d k delta dash i n k. So, delta dash is nothing but the first order derivative. So, this expression you can see the very simple expression and this mathematical steps you have to see how to derive uh, this uh, this equation. Now, at the hidden node uh, we have to consider this one the differentiation of the cost function with respect to the weight w i j. So, w i j is nothing but this w i j that is the connecting weights between the input nodes and the hidden nodes. So, this I can write in this form. So, that is delta j w divided by delta i n j into delta i n j divided by delta w i j. So, that is by the same rule we are uh, considering this expression. So, that is by considering the same rule I am getting this expression. So, this j w already I have defined that is nothing but the difference between the actual output and the desired output and this is nothing but what is i n j? i n j is nothing but the it is the input to the hidden node. So, that is nothing but w i j into x i. So, the input x i is multiplied with the corresponding weights and it is sum up. So, that is the i n j and after this I have to do the mathematics. You can see the steps all the steps. So, just I am doing the differentiation and finally, I am getting the expression that is the delta j into x i and what is delta j? The delta j is I am obtaining like this. So, it is a very simple derivation and in this derivation you have to see how to get this expression. So, at the hidden node I am determining this and in the previous slide at the output node we are determining this. So, at the output node we are determining the differentiation of the cost function with respect to the 
connecting weights. And at the hidden node, again I am determining the differentiation of the cost function with respect to the connecting weight. So, connecting weight is Wij. So, I am getting this expression. So, now how actually we do the back propagation training? So, that illustration I want to show you. So, this simple network I am considering and the inputs are x1 and x2. In this network, I have two hidden layers. So, this is my input. So, this is my input and I have two hidden layers and this is my output node. So, how to do the back propagation training in this case? So, let us see. So, you can see first I am determining y1 that y1 I can determine that is the output y1 I can determine corresponding to this node. So, y1 is nothing but f1 is the activation function w x 1 1 that is the connecting weight between x 1 and the node of the hidden layer. So, w x 1 1 into x 1 that is the x 1 is the input w x 2 1. So, that w x 2 1 you can see the weight the connecting weight between the x 2 and the, the node the node is 1 the hidden node is 1. So, w x 2 1 into x 2 so, we are getting the value y1 that is the output in the hidden node 1 of the first hidden layer. So, after this we are determining the activation this activation we are determining. So, that is nothing but y2 y2 is nothing but the activation function f2 and we are just multiplying the weight w x12 you can see in the figure into the input the input is x1 and w x22 into x2. So, it is a simple equation and we are determining the activation in the hidden neuron. We are determining the activation in the hidden neuron. And similarly, the y3 corresponding to this neuron can be determined like this. So, we are determining the activation or the output corresponding to this hidden neuron. And after this, we are considering the second hidden layer and you can see this activation or this output we can determine like this f4 that is the uh, that is the activation function w14 into y1 plus w24 into y2 plus w34 into y3 so that we are determining and after this we have to consider the second the node this node we are considering and we are getting the output output is y5 we are getting after this come to the the last node of the output node so, that is the output node and we are determining the activation that is the output y is equal to f6 that is the activation f6 w46 into y4 w56 into y5. Uh, so, that we are considering to get the activation at the output node. Now, let us consider how actually we do the back propagation. So, we are determining the difference between z minus y. So, y is nothing but that is the actual output we have determined and z is suppose the desired output that is the target output we are considering. So, delta is nothing but the error that is the difference between the target value and the actual value. So, z is the target value and y is the actual value. So, that difference we are considering that is the error. So, error should be back propagated to the input to adjust the weights of the artificial neural network. So, you can see in the previous slide we are determining delta. So, this error is back propagated you can see. So, delta 4 we are determining that is nothing but w46 into delta. So, we can now determine the delta 4. So, corresponding to this hidden node we can determine the delta 4. And corresponding to this node hidden node we can determine delta 5. So, delta 5 is nothing but w56 into delta. So, you can see I am back propagating the error. After this come to the next hidden layer. So, if I consider this is the hidden layer the corresponding this hidden node I can determine delta 1 that is nothing but w14 delta 4 plus w15 into delta 5. So, I am moving towards left that means I am moving towards the initial layers. Similarly, corresponding to this node this delta 2 is determined and finally, uh, I am adjusting the weights 
the connecting weights between the input node and the hidden nodes that is the w x 1 1 so this is the updated weight and w dash x 2 1 so i have two weights uh, and that is the corresponding to the this node corresponding to this hidden node i have two weights connecting weights so one is w x 1 1 and another one is w x 2 1 so these two weights i am updating by considering the weight updation rule so by considering the weight updation rule i am updating the weights the connecting weights between the input node and the hidden nodes so i am obtaining w dash x11 and w dash x21 i am obtaining similarly uh, i am getting the values w dash x12 and w dash x22 so all these connecting weights i am determining by this weight updation rule so that is the weight updation rule for the back propagation training and in this case you can see i am just back propagating my error from the end to the beginning from the end to the beginning i am back propagating the error from the end to the beginning and during this back propagation i am considering the gradient the gradient operation we are considering so again corresponding to this uh, neuron and we can determine the connecting weights w dash x13 and w dash x23 we can determine so i am repeating this during the back propagation i am moving from the output side to the input side that means i am moving in this direction and i am computing the gradients so i am computing the gradients and based on this the weight updation rules i am updating the weights so that is the concept of the back propagation training algorithm and after this uh, again we are determining this weights w dash 1 4 w dash 2 4 w dash 3 4 so all the weights i can determine and again w dash 1 5 w dash 2 5 w dash 3 5 so all the weights i am determining and finally i am determining the the weights between the output node and the hidden layer 2 so the weights between the hidden layer 2 and the output node that is also determined that is nothing but w dash 4 6 and w dash 5 6 so this we have determined so this is the concept of the back propagation training algorithm so let us consider one numerical problem here the numerical on back propagation so suppose in this network i have shown one network that is the feed forward network and i have two inputs x1 and x2 and we are considering the bias input is one one but this is the bias input so the bias values are b1 and b1 these two bias we are considering b1 and b1 so it is a very simple network and another bias is also considered this is the bias input and corresponding to this bias the uh, the weight is b2 that is the bias weight is b2 and in this case two input nodes two nodes in the hidden layer that is h1 and h2 and one node in the output layer that is y1 so corresponding to this input x1 is equal to 0 0.05 and x2 is equal to 0 0.1 the target output is y that is equal to 0 0.01 and we are considering the sigmoid activation function so that means corresponding to the input x1 is equal to 0 0.05 and x2 is equal to 0 0.1 the target output uh, corresponding to the node y is 0 0.01 so that information is available so first i have to initialize the weights of the artificial neural network and generally it is randomly initialized so initial weights we are considering corresponding to w1 w2 w3 w4 w5 w6 all the weights so suppose the values are 0 0.15 0 0.20 0 0.25 0 0.30 0 0.40 0 0.45 and the bias b1 and b2 are suppose 0 0.35 and 0 0.60 so these are the weights and during the forward pass that is the uh, the forward pass first i have to do the forward pass and after this i have to do the backward pass to adjust the weights of the artificial neural network so first i am computing i n h1 so that is nothing but corresponding to this hidden layer and the hidden node we are determining the i and h1 that is nothing but w1 into x1 plus w2 into x2 
plus B1 into 1 and bias input is considered B1 into 1. So, if I put all this value that will be 0 0.3775 and we are determining the output activation at H1 that is nothing but we have to consider the sigmoid function 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power minus i n h 1 and if I put all this value I will be getting 0 0.593 and similarly we can determine out h 2 also we can determine corresponding to h 2 also we can determine the output that is out h 2 we can determine that is equal to 0 0.596. Now, i n 0 let us consider what is i n 0. So, considering the h 1 h 2 and the bias input we can determine i n 0 that is the input to the output layer. So, we are considering now this output node and corresponding to this output node I am determining I n 0 that is nothing but w 5 into out h 1 plus w 6 into out h 2 plus b 2 into 1. So, if I put this value I will be getting this one 1.105 and we can determine the out 0 1 we can determine. So, output we can determine corresponding to this network. Now, we can determine the error. So, error is nothing but the target value minus the actual output value. So, that is the error the target value minus actual output value and if I put all this value the error will be 0 0.274. So, that error I have to reduce now. So, I have to minimize the error. So, that is corresponding to the forward pass. So, now let us consider the backward pass. So, corresponding to the output layer I have to find how much change in the weight w phi affects the error e. So, that is why we are considering the gradient of E with respect to W5. So, we have to determine the gradient of E that is the E is the error function that is the cost function with respect to the weight W5 and by considering the same rule I can get this expression. So, this delta E divided by delta out um, by considering this I can determine the this uh, differentiation delta out 0 divided by delta i n 0 that also I can determine and delta i n 0 divided by delta 5 that also I can determine. So, values are 0 0.741, 0 0.186 and 0 0.593 and finally, I can determine the value that delta e divided by delta w 5 that is equal to 0 0.082 and similarly, I can determine the weight w 6 also I can determine. So, that is nothing but 0 0.408. So, like this during the back propagation I can determine the weights W6, W5 all the weights I can determine. And after this let us consider the hidden layer and the input layer during the back propagation. So, now we are considering the weights W1, W2, W3, W4, W3, W4. So, these are the weights between the input nodes and the hidden nodes. So, now we have to update the weights W1. So, that is why this delta E divided by delta W 1 that I am determining and with the help of the same rule we can obtain this. So, delta E divided by delta out H 1 we are determining by this expression. So, we can determine and the value is 0 0.55 and similarly delta out H 1 divided by delta in H 1 that also we can determine that is equal to 0 0.241 delta in h 1 divided by delta w 1 that is 0 0.05 and from this I can obtain delta e divided by delta w 1 that is 0 0.006. So, that is 0 0.006. So, based on this I can determine the weights and w 1, w 2, w 3 and w 4. So, similarly we can find the other weights w 2, w 3, w 4. So, you can see during the back propagation I am obtaining the values of the weights uh, that is I am adjusting the, the values of the weights w 1, w 2, w 3, w 4, w 5 and w 6. So, this is the concept of the back propagation training. So, now let us discuss the concept of the vanishing gradient. So, what is this problem? So, the vanishing gradients in deep neural networks. So, in the figure I have shown two cases one is the training another one is the testing and I have shown the iterations in both the figures. So, in the first case I am considering a 20 layer deep neural network 
and in the second case I am considering a network having 56 layers. So, corresponding to the first network that is the 20 layered uh, neural network. So, you can see the training error. So, it goes on decreasing with number of iterations. So, you can see the training error corresponding to the 56 layer deep neural network and also you can see the training error corresponding to 20 layered deep neural network. The training error is significant corresponding to 56 layered deep neural networks. Similarly, in the case of the testing also, the performance of the 56 layer neural network is not good as compared to 20 layer deep neural networks. So, this is because of the problem of the vanishing gradient. So, what is this problem? So, for explaining this problem, let us move to the next slide. So, the vanishing gradient problem. So, to explain this uh, concept, I am considering a simple network having 4 layers. So, a network is considered and this F1, F2, F3, these are the activations corresponding to these 4 layers. This is the first layer. This is the second layer. third layer and this is the fourth layer. An input to the network is x and I have shown the connections here and output of the network is o, o is the output of the network and I have to consider the weights, the connecting weights. So, w1, w2, W3, W4. So, these are the weights corresponding to this uh, four layered uh, network. So, we are assuming that this W1, W2, W3, W4, these are scalars and the activation functions are also scalar. So, that means the corresponding output will be also scalar. So, what will be the output of the network? The output of the network is O. So, I can write in this form. So, F4 W4 F3 W3 F2 W2 F1 W1 X So, the output of the network I can write like this. So, this expression I will be getting like this. What will be the output of this node or the output of this uh, network corresponding to this point? So, output of the network is activation is F1 and it is W1X. So, like this I can compute the outputs of the nodes. So, outputs of different layers I can compute like this and O is the final output. So, for mathematical convenience, uh, I will be representing like this. So, this W1x that I can consider as theta 1 and this W2 up to this point, this I can consider as theta 2. So, this up to this point, I can consider it as theta 3. and up to this point, this I am considering as theta 4. This is for the mathematical convenience I am considering. So, if you see this expression, what is this expression? The output of the network that is actually F4 of W4 into F3 of W3 into F2 of W2 into F1 of W1 into X. That is the output of the network. So, what is actually these outputs? 
the output is O. So in terms of theta, I can write like this. O is equal to F theta 4. This theta 4 is W4 F3 theta 3. This theta 3 is equal to W3 F2 theta 2. Theta 2 is equal to W2 F1 theta 1. And finally, the theta 1 is equal to W1 x. So, I will be getting uh, these values or I will be getting these outputs corresponding to the theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, theta 4. So, O is equal to F4 theta 4, theta 4 is equal to W4 into F3 of theta 3, theta 3 is equal to W3 into F2 of theta 2 and theta 2 is equal to W2 into F1 of theta 1 and theta 1 is nothing but W1 into x. So, I can get this output. So, now let us move to the next slide. So, again I am writing the previous equation, the previous equation I am writing again. So, that is F4, W4, F3, W3, F2, W2, F1, W1, X, So, the previous equation was like this and we considered this as theta 1, this as theta 2, this as theta 3 and finally this as theta 4. So, so argument theta 4, argument theta 3, argument theta 2, argument theta 1 I can consider like this. This is for the mathematical convenience. So, corresponding to a particular network already I have explained uh, during the back propagation I have to adjust the weights of the artificial neural network. So, that is why the error is back propagated to the input that means the gradient is back propagated to the input. So, if I want to update a particular weight suppose W1 then I have to determine the gradient of the output with respect to the weight W1. So, the gradient I have to compute because the gradient value is back propagated to the input to the adjust the uh, weights of the artificial neural network. So, this is the principle of the back propagation training. So, now corresponding to this case suppose if I want to update the weight w1 so for this I have to determine this gradient so by using the same rule this del o divided by del w1 that I can write by using the same rule del o divided by del theta 4 del theta 4 divided by del f3 into del f3 divided by del theta 3, del theta 3 divided by del f2, del f2 divided by del theta 2 and del theta 2 divided by del f1, del f1 divided by del theta 1 and finally, the del theta 1 divided by del w1. So, which can be written like this x into f1 dash into w2 into f2 dash into w3 into f3 dash into w4 into del o divided by del theta 4. So, I can write like this. So, this actually you can write like this. If you see this one, this is nothing but x. If you see this one, 
this is nothing but f1 dash so like this i am getting these values so all these values i am getting like this this is for the weight w1 so i have to determine the gradient of o with respect to uh, w1 similarly if i want to adjust the weight w2 i have to determine or i have to estimate this gradient of o with respect to w2 so that is nothing but del o divided by del theta 4 into del theta 4 divided by del f3 so this is by using the same rule del f3 divided by del theta 3 and del theta 3 divided by del f2 del f2 divided by del theta 2 and del theta 2 divided by del w2 so corresponding to this i can write in this form f1 into f2 dash into w3 into f3 dash into w4 into del o divided by del theta 4 so i can write in this form so in this case if you remember in case of the artificial neural network we considered the sigmoid activation function so suppose the sigmoid activation function is fx and if i take the differentiation of the sigmoid activation function that is nothing but f dash x that is that is equal to fx into 1 minus fx so this is the derivative of the sigmoid activation function and it it is maximum so it is maximum at x is equal to 0 and corresponding to this the maximum value will be 1 by 4 so the maximum value is 1 by 4 corresponding to this sigmoid function so it is less than 1 so if you see this expression so we are multiplying this all the activation functions that is the derivative of the activation function that is the f1 dash into f2 dash so these are mainly the derivative of the sigmoid activation function in case of the artificial neural networks or in case of the deep networks we randomly initialize weights during the back propagation during the training of the artificial neural network or the deep networks we considered back propagation training and for this we randomly initialize weights of the network so we can assume that these weights can come from a distribution function with the mean 0 and the variance 1 so i am repeating this so weights are randomly initialized and we can assume that these weights come from a probability distribution function with mean 0 and the variance is equal to 1 so if you see this equation here you can see this is nothing but the product of f1 dash into f2 dash into f3 dash and already i told you the weights are from a probability distribution function with mean 0 and the variance 1 so because of this this product will be less than 1 and it will go on decreasing if i increase the number of layers so as we move towards the earlier layers for weight updation the number of products go on increasing so if i compare uh, this equation equation number 1 and equation number 2 suppose so number of products in equation 1 is more than the number of products in equation number 2 because we are considering the earlier layers so i am repeating this as we move towards the earlier layers for weight updation the number of products go on increasing so because of this since we are uh, doing the multiplications of the sigmoid activation function that is the derivative of the sigmoid activation function the gradient will go on decreasing decreasing with each and every layers so if i compare the equation number one and equation number two so the gradient value will be less in case of the equation number one because we are considering the earlier layer that is w1 we are considering that is the first layer we are considering but in the equation number two we are considering the second layer so as we move towards earlier layers the number of products go on increasing so that is the concept of the vanishing gradient so the gradient value will go on decreasing so what is the weight updation rule so what is the weight updation rule if you remember that weight updation rule 
so we have considered this we have the we have considered this weight updation rule so w t plus 1 that is the weight at the t plus 1 iteration and this is the weight in the t eight iteration minus the learning rate eta and we are computing the gradient so we are computing the gradient so since this gradient value will go on decreasing so this value will go on decreasing then what will happen the weight at t plus 1 iteration will be same as that of the weight at the t th iteration so i am repeating this since the gradient of w it will go on decreasing with increasing number of layers so that is why the weight at t plus 1 iteration will be not updated because it will be same as that of the weight at the t eight iteration so this will be negligible this term will be negligible because the gradient of the w that will be very very small so that is why the weight will not be updated the weight at the t plus 1 iteration will be same as that of the weight at t t eight iteration so weight at t plus 1 iteration will be same as that of the weight at t eight iteration that means the weights will not be updated because the gradient value will go on decreasing with increased number of layers so if i increase the number of layers the gradient value will go on decreasing because of this problem and the opposite is the exploding gradient so if the gradient value is very high so what will happen it will go on increasing and because of this it is very difficult to get the convergence condition and the oscillations will take place so that is the concept of the exploding gradient that is the opposite of the vanishing gradient in the vanishing gradient because of the number of layers if i increase the number of layers the gradient value will go on decreasing and because of this the weight will not be updated the weights will not be updated but in case of the exploding gradient the gradient value is greater than one and because of this the gradient value will go on increasing and because of this it is difficult to get the convergence condition and the oscillation will take place so how to consider this issue and this this vanishing gradient problem so how to consider this issue so let us move to the next slide so to consider this issue how to consider so first point is the choice of activation function function relu instead of sigmoid function instead of the sigmoidal function so in case of the deep networks we are considering more number of layers as compared to artificial neural networks because we are considering the deep architecture so to consider this problem the problem of the vanishing gradient we may consider relu activation function instead of the sigmoidal activation function so that is one option the second also what we can consider appropriate initialization appropriate initialization of weights so suppose i have a network so n number of terminals are there so now how to consider the appropriate weights so in this case we can consider the distribution zero mean distribution we can consider but variance we can consider as 1 by n we can consider so in the earlier case we considered the variance is 1 corresponding to this distribution because the randomly we are initializing the weights and corresponding to this we can assume that these weights are coming from a probability distribution function with mean 0 and variance 1 but in this case what we are considering the distribution having the mean 0 and the variance is equal to 1 by n and sometimes also 2 by n is also considered so either 1 by n or 2 by n we can consider for this initialization of the weights 
so variance will be 1 by n order 2 by n and the mean will be 0 and finally another technique is uh, that I am not going to discuss that is the intelligent the back propagation learning algorithm. So, we may employ this technique that is the intelligent back propagation learning algorithm we can also consider. So, with the help of these techniques uh, that is the one important technique is the ReLU function, ReLU activation function we can consider instead of the sigmoidal activation function. That is why the ReLU function is popular in case of the deep neural networks instead of the sigmoidal activation function. In this class I explain the concept of the back propagation training and also I explain the problem of the vanishing gradient and the exploding gradient. So, if I increase the number of layers of a particular network, the performance of the network may not improve because of the problem of the vanishing gradient and the exploding gradient. To consider this issue, we may consider the ReLU activation function instead of the sigmoidal activation function. Also, we can appropriately select the weights of the network that already I have explained and also we can consider the intelligent back propagation algorithm. So, these are the techniques to consider the vanishing gradient problem or the exploding gradient problem. So, let me stop here today. Thank you.